For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got done talking about the top female swimmers heading into the Olympic trials, and now we're going to be talking about the standout players from the Women's College World Series. So the World Series has unfortunately ended. It was so exciting. Um, University of Oklahoma won. So we're going to go over the standout players from all eight of the teams. I actually think that I only included, mm, there's 10 total, but not all of them are from the eight teams. But you get the point. So by the way, there's no particular order in how I went about this. I just kind of had like a bunch of standout players that I put in the list and I was like, let's go talk about them. Um, so not in a particular order here, just keeping that in mind. This is not like in first place. No, like just... All of these are standout players. Okay, so we first need to talk about Kelly Maxwell, though, because she is the most outstanding player. She earned that award. So she transferred from in-state rival Oklahoma State to University of Oklahoma prior to the 2024 season and then closed out the Sooners' four straight title in relief. Maxwell earned four wins in addition to a save in the championship clincher over five World Series appearances. She earned the most as any player award in the World Series this year, and she received a lot of criticism for switching to her rival team, but she said it paid off after receiving this award. In her lone season with the Sooners, Maxwell helped them dominate all season, finishing with a 23-2 record. This season, she struck out 164 batters in 155.1 innings with a 1.94 ERA. Before the transfer, Maxwell was a superstar at OSU for four seasons. Making the All-Big 12 first team three times, Maxwell was a dominant pitcher for the Cowgirls. In 2022, Maxwell earned numerous first-team All-America honors while finishing as a top-10 finalist for Collegiate Player of the Year. As Big 12 Co-Pitcher of the Year, she pitched 182 point. I mean, sorry, 189.2 innings with a 1.57 ERA and struck out 313 batters. In her final season at OSU, she had a slight drop from her junior season, but still led the Cowgirls to the World Series. Although it burns for OSU to see a former player win it all with OU, Maxwell's time in Stillwater helped her become the national champion she is today. And you always have to go back to your roots on that. Next, we have Jocelyn Erickson. She transferred from OU to the University of Florida, so there was some tension and motivation there. She's a very, very tough catcher, and during the elimination game against Alabama, she went two for three with four RBIs, blasting a three-run home run in the sixth inning, lifting Florida to a 6-4 to four victory. And then for Florida v. Oklahoma, Florida won 9-3, and a huge reason for that was Erickson's blasted two-run home run in the top of the first inning to give the Gators an early 2-0 lead. Let's talk about the iconic Tari Jennings. During the series, Jennings hit .321, contributing significantly with two home runs, three doubles, and eight RBIs. Notably, she hit a home run and a double in a standout game against James Madison, driving in two runs. Additionally, she delivered a game-winning double in a crucial match against Stanford, securing Oklahoma's advancement to the finals. Her consistent performance throughout the series was a key factor in her team's success. Her batting stance is... Very interesting and unique, I'll say. While a two-hand split grip is pretty common, especially to have some top-hand control of the bat through the zone, Jennings' low-hand positioning below her shoulders is definitely more unique. It's meant to help her with her launch angle and her swing, which is definitely evident in her home run tendency, and it's been successful. Oklahoma Pat coach Pat Gat, Patty Gat, oh my goodness, English, sorry. Oklahoma Pat... Oklahoma coach Patty Gasso said about Jennings, when she comes up, you know something good is going to happen, especially on these big stages. So this was technically not Jennings' best season, but regardless, her skills are so powerful and dominating that she really was a standout player despite not having her best season. She is a Texas power hitter for sure. And then Tegan Kevon's contributions to the Texas Longhorn success in the World Series are 
remarkable. Not only did she pitch a one-hitter against Stanford, but she repeated this exceptional performance for the second time during the tournament, underlining her consistency and skill in high-pressure situations. Her outstanding achievements on the mound were crucial in leading the Longhorns to a 1-0 victory over Stanford, which secured their place in the championship series. She allowed only one hit. That's insane. This victory was significant as it brought Texas closer to potentially winning their first national championship. They didn't end up winning. They were second in the World Series, which is still amazing. Um, It makes me sad. We don't need to get into it. I will literally start crying again. But (laughs) taking Kevon really, really like stood out to me. And she's one of the younger players. I'm pretty sure she's a freshman. And that's just so insane. So Texas is very lucky to have her for a lot longer if she does not transfer. Najari Kennedy. Oh my goodness. I love her. She is, I think she is definitely one of the best pitchers in the league. And obviously, you know, pitcher in the World Series. She played a crucial role for Stanford, leading them deep into the tournament. Notably, Kennedy pitched a complete game shutout against Washington, which advanced Stanford to the semifinals. Throughout the series, she maintained a a stellar level of play, evidenced by her earning a spot on the World Series All-Tournament team. Her performance included striking out eight batters and allowed just four hits in a critical game against UCLA, helping Stanford to stay alive in the elimination bracket. After being named the National Player of the Year, Stanford and a pitcher and a Jerry Candy has reeled in yet another individual accolade as she was named to the Women's College World Series All-Tournament team. Like I said, Candy was the only Stanford player honored as finalists Oklahoma and Texas were heavily represented as was SEC Power Florida. It seemed that whenever Stanford needed to shut out a big elimination game, performance to stay alive or advance, Kennedy was there to do it, and the voters for this honor took notice. Unsurprisingly, Kennedy was joined by Texas ace Taken Kevon, who whom she dueled in Stanford final game, a 1-0 loss. Kennedy has just wrapped up her sophomore season, so she'll certainly be back in the hunt for all of these awards the next year with an eye on the World Series title for Stanford. Jada Coleman, she made a game-changing diving catch against Duke that prevented multiple runs, significantly impacting the game's outcome. Additionally, Coleman was impressive at the plate, finishing 2-4 for four with a double, scoring two runs and stealing a base. Her efforts in the outfield and as a batter were crucial in leading Oklahoma to a 9-1 to one victory over Duke and maintaining their competitive edge throughout the series. Coleman was considered the hero of the World Series semifinals for her team with her hits. She was a huge threat to Texas as she was one of the eight Sooners selected to the All Big 12 first team and has that perfect ability of getting on base while also producing with power as well. Reese Atwood had an outstanding performance during the Women's College World Series. As a top seeded player for Texas, she was recognized for her impressive statistics throughout the season, leading the Big 12 with 88 RBIs and ranking nationally in several categories, including home runs and slugging percentage. During the championship series against Oklahoma, Reese played a crucial role for Texas, although the team ultimately did not win the title. Her efforts throughout the season earned her a spot as one of the three finalists for the USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year. Outside of just the World Series, she's been one of the top hitters in college softball this season with a .429 batting average, a a .502 on base percentage, and a .88 slugging percentage. She won Big 12 Player of the Year honors and was one of the three finalists for USA Softball's Collegiate Player of the Year award. Sydney Sanders had some standout moments during the World Series, particularly in helping Oklahoma advance past Florida State. She was notable for making a remarkable defensive play where she made a nearly impossible catch in foul territory in front of the F's FSU dugout. This play was part of a game that demonstrated Oklahoma's strong defensive capabilities, contributing to their victory and advancement in the tournament. And Michaela Edenfield, she demonstrated her power hitting by recording home runs against Oklahoma State and Tennessee. Also, she managed to secure a hit in four of the five games played in Oklahoma City, earning a spot on the World Series All-Tournament team. Her performance was a significant factor in FSU's deep run in the series. Lastly, I have Alyssa Washington. She played, obviously, a crucial role for Texas's advancement to the finals. Washington was notable, notably involved in decisive play against Stanford, where she scored the only run of the game in a tight 1-0 victory for Texas. This pivotal moment was significant as it showcased her agility and critical role in pressure situations, helping Texas advance to the championship series. While her lace may have been the story of the game, the senior has had a career year at the plate, hitting for .344, .422, and .6634. The Longhorns captain isn't the premier hitting on the team filled with top talent, but as seen in the World Series semifinals, Washington basically did whatever it would take to win the game despite the loss for Texas in the final game.
So we're now going to move on to the next segment where we're going to talk about the best outfits from the WNBA players before their games. It's a special segment, so I suggest staying around. Before we begin, we are going to be taking a very short break, so I will see you guys all very soon.